Hello and welcome to our latest blog post here on Beta Brains. I am Mihai Nakshu and I'm the Business Development Manager here at Beta. I am pleased you came back to see or listen to our latest blog post. Thank you. In our prior blog post, I talked about the men we consider to be the most influential in our industry. I also talked about how a suite of dimensional models were developed by the Data Warehouse Network. They were called Vertical Package Solutions and they were able to implement archives as well as operational data stores under certain conditions. As a result, Sybase was selling copies of the IWS models like hotcakes. When SAP bought Sybase, there was no role for the IWS models and they were put in mothballs. At some point in time, SAP published these models. They were still published as late as 2018. You can go and read the blog post that now has broken links on the button on the blog post. By using the one modeling style for the end user uh, query interface, the archive and the operational data store, the overall cost of implementing IWS were vastly lower than third normal for models that Teradata were selling at the time. At the same time, the benefits of a Sybase IWS data warehouse were approximately the same as using different modeling techniques. Although most people will tell you that it's not possible to properly archive data in a dimensional model, this was perfected 25 years ago and it has been implemented in so many companies. So, you might ask the question, if dimensional models can archive data effectively, why would you ever use a data vault or more complex archiving mechanisms? Well, there are situations where this sort of dimensional modeling is not well suited for the archive. Let us consider this example. Just so you know, this is a real example. Consider that most Western countries have a government department that is responsible for the payment of welfare payment to citizens. I will use Australia as an example. Australia has a government department now called Services Australia. This department is responsible for paychecks such as childcare, child support, unemployment benefits, medical insurance, and many others. It makes payments in direct order of billion dollars per year using taxes collected in the country. These sorts of departments have some very complex historical data requirements. Changing systems. It is very common for government departments to be merged and split up. Services Australia is the combination of what used to be many different government departments. So, the computer system that these departments had would have evolved over a long period of time and have been developed by different people. They would be profoundly different for each department. Then, as departments are merged, data would be migrated from some departments to other department computer systems, but the need for historical data is there for reasons I will mention next. These sort of large government departments have far greater need for support of changing system than your average large company. Changing legislation. Governments live to change legislation with respect to welfare payments. This legislation can change quite dramatically with a change of government from the left to the right. Australia is also a two-party country for all intents and purposes. There is a right-leaning party and a left-leaning party. When the left-leaning party comes into power, they're spending money like a drunken sailor, and these alterations to the legislation governing payments have to be changed and reflected in the data warehouse. When the right-leaning party comes into power, they try and reduce the overspending and this requires a large batch of legislation changes have to be applied to systems, including the data warehouse. However, both parties need to version of the legislation because during the election season, they need to have the department staff run calculations and forecasts to present proposed legislation to the electorate in an effort to win the votes. So, not only does the data warehouse need to support the changing of legislation, it needs to support both past and future proposed legislation changes along with being able to calculate the effect of these changes on groups as small as approximately 200 households. Combining complex data with other complex data. Not only does a data warehouse for such a department need to integrate all the data it has, along with the versions both past, present, and proposed future legislation, along with the calculation scenarios for different proposed future legislation, it also needs to integrate data from other departments to be able to integrate that data with all these similar complexities. For example, Services Australia needs to be able to integrate data from the Australian Tax Office and their rules for taxation and their taxation records. After all, there is not much point promising people more money and welfare payments with the left hand if the government is only going to take that money back and increase taxes with the right hand. Though, to be honest, that is pretty much what the Australian government does. 
when you have such complex environment that is so rapidly changing and so many versions of everything need to be kept, that is a tough job for a dimensional model. The way we archive data in a dimensional model is not well suited to this level of change and volatility. This very complex and relatively rare set of requirements is far better suited to a modeling style that is meant to archive data. The data also needs to be archived without much concern to how it will be queried or the costs of the overhead required to maintain different modeling styles. In short, such a situation is better suited to a data vault than it is suited to a dimensional model. Just like a telco or a retailer or a bank is better suited to using a dimensional model than a data vault model for the archive portion of the data warehouse. Now sure, given this above example, some people will argue that a data vault model offers some benefits over archiving data in a dimensional model. While this is true, those benefits come at a cost. That extra cost has to be justified. In the areas of high transaction volume consumer businesses, that cost is tough to justify. In the area of complex government departments paying out billions of dollars in welfare payments, the extra cost is relatively simple to justify. Indeed, those people who build dimensional models won't go near such government departments because they have been there before and they don't want to go there again. In summary, in this blog post I just wanted to do a short post to point out that when it comes to data modeling, we must somewhat observe that there are horses for courses. There are a class of problems that are well suited to dimensional models, including archiving in a dimensional model. There are a class of problems that are well suited to archival models. And there are a class of problems that are in the area overlapping these two model types. It is the job of the data warehouse architect to decide which modeling technique should be selected. So ladies and gentlemen, when you're proposing data warehousing modeling styles, please choose carefully. Your choice will be reviewed down the track and you will want to be able to defend your choice. Blindly implementing just one or the other modeling style because that's what you know, such an approach will not stand the test of time. So consider yourself warned that your choices will be reviewed in the future. This is inevitable. Okay? Thank you very much for your time and attention. We really appreciate you dropping by to read our blogs. I wish you a great day.